We are uh, being given the opportunity to continue our philosophies. We've developed a mission for the school to be a, a student-led project-based learning space where we're developing our relationships with our community, giving back to each other through our families and redistributing the wealth amongst each other in whatever abundance form that we can uh, support as uh, mentors and also having responsibility as earth stewards and how we can use design processes to um, develop a healthy place of learning for our students. And so some of the activities the students would be doing are, are focused in food sovereignty, like gardening, um, learning from their elders, ways that we've grown food in the past, ways to hunt and process buffalo, and through that process, understand the more complex Western com concepts that may be um, understood like velocity, wind direction, and, and using that project-based learning to meet the standards of um, the standards and benchmarks of the Ocheti Shakoin and also state standards. So when we were awarded the 65 acres, I made a, a prototype, a proposed design for it. So this is my first drawing, very rough sketch. And I shared this, I work for the uh, earth activists for Starhawk, as was mentioned in the beginning. And so um, I basically wanted the school space to include our culturally important plants of the Lakota people as much as possible to help increase our um, canopy cover over the whole reservation because that's something that was lost. And so in this uh, design, it's not as um, highlighted, but basically um, the campus of the school will have uh, places the students can make medicine, process their own food, and um, eventually learn more about multi-strata agroforestry practices and how it can be supportive of um, carbon sequestration and climate change. And so for the Earth Activist Training, we held our virtual permaculture design course, and I shared our, our school project with our students and a group of 10 students chose to contribute to the, the design of our campus. And they did this with interviews from me, other teachers and mentors, and also youth and elders from our community. And um, basically they use a lot of social permaculture on the list on the left is their names and a short bio. And on the right is what aspect of the design that they focused on but they, they worked closely through uh, Zoom interviews with, with the clients and each other, collecting the data to best meet our community needs with the resources that we could also offer. So the, these students that are adult students, they broke up into groups depending on their interests and they would brainstorm um, each individual aspect of the design and then presented it. So the school um, is crafted to connect the people to the land with the future in mind. And so this is the base map for the site in Bear Soldier South, and it's also known as McLaughlin, South Dakota. And so th this is the 65 acres that we were awarded by the tribe. And um, in Lakota, the name for bear soldier is also Mato Akichita. And so the average rainfall for this area is 16 to 17 inches during the summer season. And we have a growing season basically from June to August. This also um, means that we have a, a lot of our moisture coming in the form of snowfall, which can be moderate to heavy throughout the winter. winter and this year we had very little snowfall. And so when we do have storms come through, there's a strong wind um, down across the prairie. That is something that we consider in the design process. Uh, also, there is occasional drought in the summertime. 
So these extreme conditions can affect the design for what the clients and the designers considered. So they included a contour map because um, as you can see, there's a low, lower area and a higher plane over here. And it generally slopes on the east. And so the students through observation looked at this contour map and this contour map and decided uh, around where the red arrow is, is a flat, most flat site that's elevated and out of a potential flood space. So that was their proposed space for the building, which is seen in this site plan. And so in the site plan, um, we're working with a designer company from the three affiliated tribes in North Dakota to design our buildings, which is this circular main building. And the second attached building, we may have, it would probably be another circle. And this is the student's proposed layout based on my um, in my, uh, my simple design that I just showed, they felt that um, this was efficient. And so they included a lot of aspects that I'll go into more thoroughly. Also, I'll go back a little bit, but outside of the school campus, this green area is our windbreak, because like I mentioned, we have very strong widths in the Dakotas and inside the windbreak is a proposed food forest. And we're um, gonna work with the students to implement this, these designs. Uh, our goal is to have the students that are going to the school as active in the design process as possible. So I'm hosting workshops this summer focus in bioremediation and um, cover cropping and soil building and, and basically the introduction to developing a food forest. And so in the student's design, they wanted to recreate a village space, which is why there's so many round um, features and circular aspects to the design. Um, not only, I mean, the teepees were round, but also the M Mandan, Hidasa, and Arikara, who also lived along the Missouri River. They lived in round earth lodges. And so the main building is going to be modeled off of an earth lodge, but modernized um, based on this living stone lodges contract that we're working on right now. We have funding for the building, but we're working on meeting more of our funding needs to uh, have an attachment for an office space. But otherwise, until we meet our funding needs for a building, we're considering pop-up classes and things like teepees and just so we can have workshops and be moving forward with the education models of the school regardless of what state the site is in in the process. So our first aspect is bioremediation. The space was used for agriculture. And so these are taken from the slideshow that the design students offered. And so we would start with a soil test, planting a cover crop and preparing bulk compost teas and using that to activate the lands for future plantings of things like our windbreak. And in the model, it was very thorough, six row windbreak and the design allows it to uh, be more controlled and hopefully reduce the impact of the weather on the building and the other outdoor structures that we're planning to include. And so uh, not only will it protect zones one through three from the winter winds, but also help regenerate the soil, prevent future erosion, and create a small nook for the food forest to thrive in. 
And so the food forest includes all the culturally important plants of the Lakota. And these are just proposed plants that we would work with the students in these workshops this summer to decide a finalized food forest design. So these are proposed and another delicious guild that was created by Ashley was uh, plum salad, which again, this is a beautiful slide from their presentation that just shows how having multi strata plantings can lead to overall environmental health. They also included gray water in the design and it's a, a branching system that would be um, some from the outside kitchen going towards fruit trees that are lining the driveway and then also the um, sink and hand washing stations to go towards the food forest, which could be the longest pipe could be 200 feet away. And there might need to be a clean out place at about 100 feet for the gray water line is what was proposed. And also um, just using as much of our resources to activate the land. And so that includes compost. And so there's a few sorry for the image quality, but there's a few proposed compost systems and that would be worm bins for the green waste and a larger composting system for other scraps that would be used in the community garden. So the students at the school would not only have an individual plot that they could focus on just to design for their family, but also a collaborative plot that would be considered a community garden. And also these medicinal herbal spirals um, where the compost and compost teas that we make will be applied. Also the food forest that's in the north um, west corner. So we proposed a, a partially underground greenhouse just because we know how harsh our weather is. And they suggested, the students suggested that we do a greenhouse with a chicken coop attached on the north side. And so this was really interesting to me because I hadn't considered that. And they did a lot of great research on how the uh, north side chicken coop with the attached to the greenhouse that has the solar, as solar aspects for the sun exposure can really increase the length of our growing potential. And also we can have some alternative tractor or portable things in the summertime to get them in a larger space for them to explore for our chickens. That wouldn't come in the until the second phase or third phase of our design, but uh, we would prioritize things like an outdoor kitchen because culturally we cooked outside often in the summer months specifically. And so including things like a cob oven and a smokehouse in the out, outdoor kitchen design was essential. Also um, solar dehydrating spaces and hand washing stations. Um, are envisioned and we also would work with community members and students to actually uh, implement and activate those designs.